Phil, Shanti, are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Well, hello everyone. Um, we will just give it a couple of more minutes. We have more people joining right now. Let's wait a couple of minutes and then we'll start. Okay, um, let's begin. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to today's webinar. It's on credit card processing on IndyKama sites. I'm Geeta Nathan, IndyKama Senior Manager, and I will be the presenter for today's webinar. And before we get started, I'd like to go over a couple of quick housekeeping items. Uh, please note that all attendees are in listen-only mode. And if you are listening using your computer speaker system, which is the default, and if you want to join via phone, you can select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will be displayed. During the presentation, if you have questions, you can submit your questions into the questions pane of your GoToWebinar panel. And we will address these questions at the end of the presentation. And if you have any technical difficulties um, and if you have other questions that needs to be addressed right away, please put it into the questions uh, pane Phil and Shanti are watching it while I do the presentation. And this webinar is being recorded. So, and again, helping me today from the IndyCommerce team, we have Phil Davies, IndyCommerce Director, and Shanti Kiyaka, um, the Customer Support Specialist. So let's begin. Um, who is this webinar for? All IndyCommerce stores who are either preparing to transition to your own credit card processor or if you're already using your own credit card processor. We have some additional features that we'll be launching. So even if you're already on your credit card processor, you will find some useful information in this webinar. And if you are an IndyCommerce store that is currently on Stripe, um, the information here will still be helpful for you. Uh, we just have to wait a couple of weeks before we can make arrangements to move you from Stripe to your own credit card processor. The topics covered in this webinar, we will have, we'll talk about the credit card processing in general, about merchant account, authorized.net account and settings, how to prepare your IndyCommerce site for the transition, and what happens on the day of the transition and some of the new features that we are launching um, which will help you now while you're still on the ABAs account and later when you move to your own credit card processor. 
Now, there are three terms that will be repeatedly used when we talk about credit card processes and indie comma sites. So let's go over what those three terms are. So merchant account, it is the financial institution or bank account. It's used by the merchant specifically for collecting payments for credit card transactions. It could be online or in-store. And payment gateway, this is the infrastructure that makes it possible for merchants to collect payments from your websites. And authorized.net is the payment gateway that is supported on indie commerce websites. Um, sorry. Okay, there are three. Okay, uh, the three main components that work together to make online transactions possible. So you have your indie commerce website, which is where your customer is going to place orders and you have your authorized.net payment gateway, and then you have your customer's credit card bank. So first, when an order is placed from the Indie Commerce website, the information is sent to authorized.net. The credit card information and the order information is sent to authorized.net. Now, authorized.net will do a first level of authorizations, some validations. Like, for example, if the card is valid or, um, if the customer's IP is blocked or something. So certain validations which does not involve the customer's bank. So those validations are first done by authorized.net. And if there is a problem, we will hear immediately, we get a response from authorized.net and the customer will see an error message. Now, once the first set of validations are okay, then the information is sent to the customer's bank. The customer's credit card bank, it's going to verify the customer's uh, account, make sure that the customer has enough funds and it sends a response back to authorized.net. And now authorized.net now verifies the remaining set of validations. If the, for example, the most important thing that is checked here is the address verification. If the customer's address, the billing address on the order matches the billing address associated with the credit card company. And once that's okay, then we get the final response from authorized.net. It's either an accepted, which means it's okay, and the customer completes checkout. And if there is a problem, we get a decline, and the customer sees the error message, and the customer is still in checkout. So first, let's start with what the merchant account is. So most of you already would have a merchant account. If you are accepting credit cards for in-store transactions, then you probably have a merchant account. But you can use that same merchant account for your Indie Commerce website too. Just two things you need to confirm with the merchant account, if they can work with authorized.net and if they can process all the four major card types for online orders on that one account. And if you don't have a merchant account, then you have to create one. And again, when you talk to someone new to create a merchant account, make sure they work with authorized.net and also they can process all the four card types. And ABA has vetted gravity payments for online transactions for indie commerce stores and there is a pre-negotiated rate so if you want to contact gravity payments to set up an account there is a sign up link and uh, you, there are also two customer service representatives with gravity who can answer any questions but again you are not obligated to go with gravity you can choose any merchant account who can give you the best rates And before you contact your merchant account, any merchant account, they will require certain information on your website before they can even set up an account for you for online transactions. So these are terms and conditions, privacy policy, return or refund policy, shipping and payment information, and a contact us or contact information. So they will look for this on your website before they can create an account for you. So before you contact your merchant account, for setting up something for your indie commerce site please make sure this information is available on your website we do have some boilerplates for these pages it is as simple as create a page put this content in and you customize it the way it works for your store and you can make it available on the website so you basically there are two basic options for displaying this information on your website if your website has a footer then you can place it as links on the footer region. 
And if you don't have a footer, some themes don't have a footer, then you can just provide a link in your main menu links. So just make sure all these pages are available. And when you set up a new merchant account, it usually takes about three to five business days for them to get the process done. So just to avoid any further delay, make sure that you have these pages ready on your website before you contact your merchant account. Next comes the authorized.net account. When you are working with your current merchant service provider or a new one, check with them first because they will probably be able to set up an authorized.net account for you. And sometimes they may also give you a better deal. Um, so first check with them. But if they are not working with authorized.net, then you can go directly to authorized.net and set up your authorized.net account. So the merchant account and authorized.net accounts are different, just that your merchant service provider may provide that additional service to make it easy for you but you are always welcome to say, go directly to authorize.net. Again, it's at the end of the day, it is who is giving you a better rate and a better fee structure. And when you set up your authorize.net account, make sure whether it is the merchant service provider setting it up for you or you do it on your own, make sure these two important must have features are enabled on your authorize.net account. So the first one is the CIM, which is the Customer Information Manager. So what it does is customers, with this feature, customers can save their credit card profiles for future orders. Again, nothing is saved on your indie commerce website or on our platform. This sensitive information is saved on authorized.net's secure service, thereby it simplifies uh, PCI compliance. And the next feature is the advanced fraud detection suite. And this allows you to configure some of the fraud filters. There are about 13 fraud filters with authorized.net and having this gives you the control over what type of authorizations you want to allow and which ones you want to decline. And there is an optional feature, which is the advanced automate, sorry, automated recurring billing called ARV. And if you are a store that has a subscription program where you want to charge your customers uh, every month is any form of recurring billing this is a good feature to have again i believe as of now these three features are free of charge uh, but authorized.net may have changed it but so please check that and once your you set up your authorized.net account you will get a link from them to activate your account so activate the account and the next thing you need to do is do not forget to reset your password for your authorized.net account reset the password and use strong passwords and also there are options for you to create multiple user accounts on your authorized.net account for example if you create an account you are the owner of that account and you have more privileges you can see a lot you can see your bank information and everything on it but if your store staff is going to access the authorized.net account for some other reason you don't want them being able to see all the information. So you can create different roles, just like how you have different roles on your Indie Commerce site, you can create different roles on your authorized.net account too. So you have something called an administrator or a transaction manager example. So you can have multiple accounts on it. Next, a checklist of what your authorized.net account should be configured. So first, again, check your profiles. Make sure the information is correct, change your password, and set up new accounts for additional staff members. And make sure your customer information manager feature is enabled. This is a requirement for you to work with in the commerce websites. And next, advanced fraud protection detection suite. We do have a help document with our recommendations in it. Of course, our recommendations, you don't have to follow them. You can change yours you can change it so it suits your business model. And the payment form and form fields, this is also an important setting. Um, you have to make sure that these fields are, none of them are set as required because when an order information is sent to authorize.net, let's say it's a store pickup order, your shipping information is not going to be available. And if your authorized.net is set up for a shipping fields to be required, then those transactions will fail. So make sure this none of these fields are required. And fraud email notifications. When you set up an authorized.net account, 
you can, and you set up the fraud filters initially for a couple of months it would benefit for you to get notifications anytime a transaction is flagged as fraudulent so you can actually take a look at it and this will also help you adjust your fraud settings so set this fraud email notifications and later in the presentation i will show you where these settings are and the last thing is to set the authorized.net account to live mode usually by default it is in a test mode and but to make it to, once you're ready set it to the live mode okay so now your authorized.net account is all set up what is the next step you have to give us some information so you have three pieces of information that we need one is the api login id then the transaction key and the public client key and the this link here is a document on authorized.net which will walk you through the steps for creating your api login and transaction key and your help documents on the indie commerce help documents will give you instructions on creating the public client key and most important please do not email this information to the indie commerce team this is sensitive information so please do not email it to us we have created a secure form on your Indie Commerce websites, and you can submit this information to us through that form. And that is available under Store Configuration, Account Information and Preferences, and Store Authorized.net. It is not there today, so please don't check for it today. It will be available tomorrow. So you can, anytime your account is ready, just send us the information. We will keep it, and when you're ready to do the switchover, we will use it. We will configure your site and keep it ready whenever you're ready to do the switchover. And do not send us your authorized.net login information. That is your account. The authorized.net is yours. We don't need access to your authorized.net account, so please do not send us the information. So this is what the main settings page of your authorized.net account will look like. So here is, you will find a link for API credentials and keys. So this is what you will use to generate your API login and your transaction key. And this is the public client key. So manage public client key. So this is the link you will use to generate this. So the API login is like the username. So when you set up an account, you have a an username and password. So the API login is kind of like the username. So once you create an API login for your authorized.net account, it does not change. It remains the same. And when you go to this link, you can see it. And the transaction key is like a password. So you will not be able to, you generate the transaction key, you have to save it and send it to us. And later when you go into this page on API credentials and keys, you will not see your transaction key displayed there because it is a password and it is not meant to be displayed anywhere. But please do not regenerate it because you don't see it, please do not regenerate it because when you regenerate a transaction key, it's the same as changing your password, which means you have to let us know what your new transaction key is. And the public client key, that is a public information, so you can just send it to us. Next, uh, we'll go through some of the authorized.net recommendations that we have for the configuring the fraud filters. So this is the main page of your fraud detection suite. When you set up an account, you will see a link to this on the left side of your account. And again, this is a snapshot of our account with authorized.net. Um, you can notice, uh, you can see that we have disabled some of the fraud settings. That is because that is our uh, choice because uh, we are handling orders from uh, many stores. So we decided to disable some of the settings. But in your case, since you have more control over all the transactions and your website and authorized .net account, I think you can configure the settings based on what works for you. So, um, and here uh, we will go over this in detail. But see, this is where the email notification link is. So this is where you would go to configure yourself to get these email notifications, at least for the first few months to make sure everything is working right. And you will see some numbers here. So this means like when a filter is enabled, how many transactions are triggering that filter? And this is saved for a month. Again, this is information that will help you monitor and adjust your filters. And here you can set it different way. Here there are, they are grouped in different, um, based on the type of filters. So these are all the 
these the daily velocity and the hourly velocity the transaction ip velocity these are about transactions that come into your site like the number of transactions and then here you have the avs which is the address verification system and then the cvv and you also have an amount filter let's say you want to set the limit to 200 dollars and per transaction you don't want to go about that you can set the limit here and here we do not use most of these except for the regional IP address filter. This is about which countries you want to allow. In our case, because this, we want to be careful, so we have very strict uh, filters here. But you can open it up to more countries if you want. Let's say you're in the commerce site, you're accepting orders from all over the world, then it makes sense for you to allow credit card transactions from those countries. So this, this has to go with what you allow on your IndieCommerce site. So looking into the address verification filter itself. So you can see um, these are the various uh, responses that Authorized StackNet would generate. And you can choose which ones you want to allow and which ones you want to decline. By default, we have declined these four conditions and we are only allowing these two. And a quick note here, when you configure your authorized.net fraud filters, please do not set any filter for review. So what happens is if you choose review, then the customer places an order and authorized.net will authorize the transaction, but it will hold it for review, which means the customer does not get to finish their checkout process. Authorized.net is waiting for you to log into authorized.net and approve the transaction. And all this time the customer is still waiting they think that their credit card did not go through or there was a problem so please do not use hold for review we looked at some of the um, authorized .NET settings for the stores that moved to their own credit card processor in the last couple of weeks and we noticed that by default these were set as by hold for review it works for some other businesses but not for indie commerce so please do not have anything that is hold for review and this is the address and zip code responses. So here you can see that we are giving more emphasis to zip code. If the zip code matches, we allow it. If the zip code does not match, we just decline it. That's important. And the extended zip code, we are not very particular because customers are mostly never going to enter their extended zip code during checkout. So there's no point in checking that. So again, these are some of our recommended settings. Um, you can start with this and then monitor it and then you can tweak it later. And here you can see that we have set it to allow but report triggered filters. We are not holding it for review. We are just asking authorized.net to let us know when these are triggered. And this is actually what generates the number here. These are the ones, the numbers because we want it. We have selected this setting. Next is the CVV, which is the three digit or the four digit code on a card. Again, um, we either allow or we decline. There is no in between for us. And this is our uh, recommendation and our settings. And in this case, uh, when the card uh, should be on the card, but it's not indicated or is not processed, we decided to allow this because when a customer has a gift credit card, sometimes they don't come with the CVV code. So that's a reason we decided to allow these two. And this is what we talked about, the daily velocity filter. So here what it does is it limits the number of transactions that you want to allow per day. We do not use this because we get thousands of transactions every day and we do not affect any indie commerce site that's using our indie, uh, authorized.net account. So we don't have this enabled. But if you want to, you can set this. Again, you can set it to some number here, monitor it if you see if you feel that you're getting more transactions or not that many then you can adjust this this is the hourly velocity filter which controls the number of transactions that are allowed per hour and this sometimes comes in handy for uh, fraudulent orders sometimes we find that one person is just trying to uh, place multiple orders at the same time um, so this again again if you set this up please monitor it you, if you are enabling this, you should actually, it would be recommended to use process as normal and report filters triggered. So this way you can keep track of how many times this was triggered. 
and then you can go and change the settings. And this is where the setting is. So if you want to get notified about fraudulent suspicions, please put your email here. It could be you or it could be someone at the store that you trust who has access to the authorized .NET and who, has, who should also have access to your IndieCommerce website. That's the only way it would work. So let's say they get a notification saying a particular order is fraudulent, then they can pull the email ID of that customer. They can go into your IndieCommerce site, check if that customer has placed other orders on your sites. Maybe not all orders were triggered as fraud, then maybe that would, that would help them catch that customer. So anyone who gets this email should also have access to your IndieCommerce site. That's the best way for this to work. Next, this is important about your authorized.net account. Please remember it is your account. Whoever creates it, it is your account. So learn to manage it. There are lots of tools and reports in it. Um, I in our department, we personally don't use any of these reports, but again, for you uh, as a store, it would help to generate daily reports. So there are tons of reports there, so please take a look at it. And also, the authorized.net will make some announcements, and that is usually displayed on the first page when you log in. Uh, some of these announcements are really important. Sometimes they may suspend transactions. They may have like a maintenance and transaction. They will warn us that transactions are not going to go through for two hours. Usually it happens in the middle of the night, but still it is going to affect transactions on your website. So please pay attention to the announcements. Recently they have one that talks about um, password resets and any um, pin expiration, they reduced it from 30 minutes to 10 minutes, which means if I'm going to reset my password, I have to monitor my email to get the link and then reset it within the 10 minutes. And again, schedule maintenance. And sometimes if authorized.net is down, it happens. If authorized.net is down, then it's going to affect your online transactions. So for if you follow them on Twitter, then you get notified right away. Again, support, please form that connection with your authorized.net rep. Uh, or I have, we have used authorized.net for almost 11 years now, and I have contacted them via phone or their online chat, and they are very responsive. They are available 24 seven. So they are pretty responsive. So please use their support. If you have any questions, please call them. Again, I just want to make one thing clear. If anything, if you have any questions about your IndieCommerce site or orders on your IndieCommerce site, please contact us first. And if you need to contact authorized.net, we will let you know. We are your first level. Like, please don't think that you are losing our uh, Indie Commerce team as a support for online orders when you move to your own uh, uh, credit card processor. That's not the case. We are still here to help you. You are an Indie Commerce store. Anything that happens on your Indie Commerce site, we are here to help you. Next, uh, just uh, to, go, uh, to, come, uh, to go over, summarize the merchant account and the authorized.net account. So uh, you have the credit card processor, your merchant account is set, and then you have your authorized.net account that is also set. During, let's say you are all set today, and then you send us the information, and then we configure your IndieCommerce site, and you are good to go, and you are accepting credit card orders and using your own processor, everything is good. Let's say two months from today, another credit card processor contacts you and they are willing to give you a better rate and you want to switch. Yes, you can switch, but do not change your authorized.net account. That is important. The credit card processor in the back end, yes, you can change that, but not your authorized.net account because your authorized.net account holds all your customers' credit card profiles. And if you switch your authorized.net account, you have to go through what you are going through right now about changing from ours to yours. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to lose your customer information. So please let your, if you're working with another merchant service provider, please let them know ahead of time that you already have an authorized.net account and you want to keep it and that's what you have to work with. And they can accommodate that. Okay, now, um, what are the advantages of having your own credit card processor? My most important thing, you don't have to wait for ABA to transfer the funds for online orders. You get the money as soon as it is settled that day, you get the money in your bank in a couple of days. And when customers receive a credit card statement for online orders, it will say your store name, not independent bookstore, like how it appears now. So this will help with a lot, it'll eliminate a lot of customer confusion now. 
And if you are using subscription programs, then the recurring billing feature will be very handy. We do have a couple of IndieCommerce stores who use this feature. Um, you can set your fraud protection settings that you're comfortable with. Example, may, most important thing like international orders. If you're accepting international orders on your IndieCommerce site, it makes more sense for you to allow credit cards from those countries. You can get better credit card fees. You are not going to be paying credit card fees to ABA, but you'll be paying directly to your credit card processor and you can negotiate that rate. And Authorize.net also uh, offers a verified merchant seal, so you can get that and put it on your website. And more control over online credit card transactions. And we will talk about this more in the presentation later, and also about how you can process refunds directly from your Indie Commerce site. You don't have to contact us, you don't have to wait. You can process the refunds directly from your Indie Commerce site. Okay, and there is one small drawback with this transition, which, is, which has to do with the customer's saved profiles. Let's say you're an Indie Commerce store, and by default, you are saving your customer's credit card profiles. And sometimes, even if you're not doing it by default, customers may choose to save it because it is a big advantage. Um, the next time they log in, their credit card information is already saved, so they don't have to type in the numbers. It's, they can just use one of the saved profiles. So while, let's say you're transitioning to tomorrow, and today when I log into your site, I'm, your site is on ABS Authorized.net, so I see my saved profiles. I have an Amex card, a Visa card, and a MasterCard saved in my profile. And when I go through checkout, I have the options to choose one of the three without putting in my numbers. And tomorrow, you switch to your credit card processor and Authorized.net account. And when I go into your website to place an order, I lose that information here because you have a new authorized StatNet account and this does not carry over. So here, when I look at this as a customer, it can be a little confusing because yesterday I was able to choose the credit cards and today I cannot. And so this is something that you may want to let your customers know ahead of time, maybe post a message on your website or post a message. If you don't want to make it public on the home page of your website, you can maybe post something on the uh, checkout pages, uh, which is visible only when a customer is logged in. So here I have to put in my credit card again because now it's using your credit card processor. But this is a temporary issue because once I start using this and I put in my credit card numbers, then later, like a week from now, if I come back again to your website, when I look at it, I will see my card saved. In this case, it is saved against your authorized .NET account. So exactly during the transition, customers are going to lose their profiles. But again, when they go back and then place the orders, those profiles will again be created on your authorized .NET account. Okay. Now, what do you do to prepare for this transition? First, you are going to get your merchant account, which can process online orders. Um, the, yeah, this is what they call the card not present transaction. And then you get your authorized.net account and then you configure it. Contact your authorized.net support and make sure that your account is ready. It is in live mode and sometimes your authorized.net can place a test transaction between your authorized.net account and your credit card processor to make sure that side of the connection is good because uh, from where we are, we cannot check that. So you authorize.net can help you with that check. Once it's done, then you submit the API login ID, transaction key, and the public client key to your Indie, on your Indie Commerce site. Next is try to process all the open orders. The faster you can do that, the sooner we can get you moved to your own credit card processor and authorize.net account. So what happens if you have regular, this applies for both regular and pre-orders. If you have any, uh, mark all, uh, as many orders as possible to payment received. And if these are very old orders and the authorization has expired, then if you're just going to mark them as canceled, then just mark them as canceled. And we do have a help document about how to edit an order to mark them as canceled. And if it will help you, you can create custom order statuses. And a week before we are going to schedule the transition, it's better to stop Ingram orders because Ingram orders usually takes about three to five days for the entire cycle to finish. Like from when we send the order to Ingram to when we receive the invoice, it takes about three to five days. So in a normal time, but if it's a back ordered book, it can take longer. So 
please, uh, it would, so our recommendation is to stop sending orders to Ingram at least a week before you're planning to transition. And uh, we will talk about some of the new features that are available. And the whole purpose of these new features is to make it easy for stores to manage this transition. And what do you do on the day of the switchover? You disable credit card payment method on the website. So while we are getting ready to do the switchover, we don't want to be surprised by a new credit card order. Post a message on the website to let your customers know and also provide alternate payments in case they are there to purchase and then they cannot use the credit card payment method. And be available by phone or email to coordinate with the IndyCommerce team member. It's important because when we do the switchover, we don't have access to your authorized StartNet account and we don't have access to your credit card processor. So if something is not working right, we need to contact you and get that resolved soon. So please be available by phone or email. Also be ready to log in to your authorized StartNet account. You should have your account, you should be able to access your authorized StartNet account when we are transitioning you. And also once the transition is done, be ready to be your first customer on your credit card processor because once it's moved to your credit card processor it's important to make sure you're able to use credit cards you're able to place orders and you're able to complete orders so you could be the first customer to do that if everything is in place the transition actually takes only 15 minutes for us we will set aside a time 15 minutes you will be on your own processor and you can start accepting payments if everything is in place Again, we have had um, certain issues with some bookstores where uh, they are not available when we do the transition, which means we have to suspend the work, we have to suspend the transition. The site is still not accepting credit cards and it can stay that way for a couple of days and that is not good. So if you have everything ready, the whole process takes only about 15 minutes for us. Okay. so. I've been referencing some of the new features that are coming and this again will be available next week. So what we have added is on the page where you look at all the orders, we added, we, are, we will be able to, or if you are familiar with views, you will be able to add this column, which will clearly indicate for every credit card order, if it is an ABA, it was processed using ABA's credit card processor. So this is a view before the transition is happening. And we also, sorry, we also added a filter, so you can sort them by filter by ABA or store credit card processor. Our goal is this will make it easy for you to make a list of all the orders that are still on ABA's processor and then take the necessary action and take action fast. And when you open a particular order, we have added this here too, where it clearly says, so per order, whether it is using ABA's processor or your processor. So as you prepare for the switchover, we are asking you to mark all the open orders as completed, payment received, or canceled. Previously, it used to be completed or canceled, but now with all the new features we have in place, you can keep these orders in payment received state, which means you just don't get the money from ABA until you complete it, but you have charged the customer's card. So if you can mark it as payment received, I think that is good. You don't have to complete the orders now. And if you have pre-orders, which I think many stores do, pre-orders going into sometimes their book is not out until next year, and these orders are already marked as payment received, so they are good. But if it will help you, you can also create some additional custom order statuses. So later, it will be easy for you to filter them. Okay, now let's talk about the two main um, features that we have created for you. And um, just, I think for me, it makes it more, uh, it makes it better to explain this new feature with uh, taking two use cases. So the first one is the customer places an order on your website, a credit card order, and the store marks it as payment received to charge the customer's credit card. The store is ready to ship the order and customer calls the store and wants to add another book to the order. Can the store edit the order, charge the customer for the additional book on that same order from the website? If you're using your AB, if you're using currently on ABS credit card processor, no, you cannot do that. But if when you switch to your own processor, you can do that. So that is a big advantage. This is a new feature we are providing when you move to your own credit card processor. We want your staff to be able to process transactions, charges, and refunds directly from the IndyCommerce site 
without having to log into the authorized.net account. So this is possible. So let's see what the screens look like. Again, I had to take some screenshots, but later if we have time, I can also walk through this on a sample site. So when you, on an order, you see the reauthorize credit card button on the payment pane. So when you click on that, you come to this page. So in this case, what happens is the customer, um, so what was the use case we had? The store, well, the customer called and wanted to add a new book to the order. So this is the original amount. So here you see 64.92 is the amount that was captured on the customer's card first. And later the order was updated, a new book was added, the new total now is 72.02. Now the balance is $7.10. Now you have to charge the customer this additional amount. So on this credit card terminal page, this is divided into two halves. The first, the top one is for charging customers. The bottom one is for refunding customers. So now you see the charge amount, it's automatically filled in here. And then you can choose the credit card that you need to charge it to. The best practice would be just choose the one that was used for this order. So the customer is not surprised. And you select this, and then you can either authorize the amount, or if you really just want to get it over with and charge it, you can use the charge amount. And when you go to the admin comments, so this is the original amount, 64.92. That is the first charge. And then the next charge, 710, was applied to that same authorization. So when you look in authorize.net, you will see two charges for this one order. And this is possible when you use your own credit card processor. The reason we did not make these available when you use ABA's AuthNet is because it is hard for us, because it's our account, it's hard for us to keep track. But since it's your uh, credit card processor, I think it makes sense for you to, for the store to have more control over it. And the next new feature, this is about refunds. I then we hear this a lot, and I know this happens a lot, so we decided to make this available. So here what happens, this use case is the customer places an online credit card order and the store marks the order as payment received and the customer's card is charged. The store is ready to ship the order. Then the customer calls and says they want to come to the store and pick it up, which means now you have to refund the customer the shipping cost. So can the store edit the order, remove the shipping cost and issue a refund to the customer? With ABA's credit card processor, you cannot. But with your own credit card processor, you can do this. So this is what it looks like. Um, so first, the original charge on the order was $79.13, $79.13, which included the shipping. Now the customer called and there is no uh, shipping charge, so you edit the order and then the new amount is $67.41. And please ignore these two tax line items. We were testing something and it just appeared here. Um, so the, the new order total is $67.41. The difference is 11 72. So now this is the amount you need to refund the customer. Again, you click on this reauthorize credit card button. It takes you to this page and now you're going to use the bottom half for refunding the customer. Since this is not a charge, there is nothing going on here, but this is a refund. So this is where you need to focus. The amount to refund is automatically filled in here. Then you can just select the authorization and then you can refund the amount using this authorization. When you do that, the credit card process is successful and then a refund has been issued to the customer. So now the refund has been issued. You can see this here. So 79.13 was the original captured amount, 11.72 was refunded, and 67.41 is the remaining amount. There is one thing you need to remember to issue refunds. Let's say you mark an order as payment received today. You have to wait until 24 hours before you can issue the refund because this charge has to settle before you can issue the refund. So here, let's say you try this. I think we have put in a validation here that you will not be able to issue the refund until it settles. And then you go to the admin comments, you can see that also clearly. So this is the first charge, the first capture that is 79.13, and then this was the refund. So it says refund capture charge, and this is the refund that was issued to the customer. So everything is available on the website for you. So all the transactions are available here. Everything that happened with the customer's card is available here. 
So before, to better understand what happens with credit card processing on indie commerce site, I thought it would be good to go over what we call as the life cycle of an indie commerce credit card order. So we will look at three scenarios. Order is placed by the customer and then it is processed by the store. No surprises there, it's a simple order. Next order is placed by the customer, but the store cancels it even before the customer is charged. Now what happens? An order is placed by the customer and then it is canceled after the customer is charged. So first use case, the order is placed by the customer and processed by the store. So the customer places an order. It is in pending status. And if you look on authorized.net, it's going to say authorized pending capture. Then the store marks the order as payment received. The order status becomes payment received. And on authorized.net, you will see it as captured pending settlement. And overnight, this will settle. So the next day, the order status is still payment received, but on authorized.net, it will say settled successfully. When it is settled successfully, that is when the money is getting to your bank account. And later, the store marks the order as completed. The order status changes to completed. Nothing happens in authorized.net at that time because once it is settled, that's it. The completed status is just a good practice for you to move all orders to completed when you are done so that later when you run a report it's easy for you to run a report on all completed orders so marking an order is completed is just for your indie commerce site just think of it as a good housekeeping best practice to complete orders when they are done on authorized.net nothing happens there so next use case is when the customer placed the order and then it was canceled by the store before charging the customer. So the order comes in, it is pending, it is authorized pending capture. And then the store marks the order as canceled. When the order status becomes canceled and here the author on authorized.net, you will see that it is voided. The reason it is voided is because this authorization was never captured. There's just an authorization, no capture there. So the customer was not charged. So all authorized.net needs to do is void it. And this is automatically taken care of if you cancel the order. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about whether the authorization is still open or whether it is captured. Our system, IndieCommerce system will take care of it. If you uh, mark an order as canceled, before marking it as payment received, the IndieCommerce site knows that the, there was no capture and it just as authorized.net to void it. But if you try to cancel an order after the customer was charged, then we will let authorized.net know that the uh, customer was charged, so to issue a refund. So you don't have to worry as an order processing staff, you don't have to worry about it. All you need to do is mark it as canceled and IndieCommerce site will take care of the rest. And the third use case is order placed by the customer and it is canceled after charging the customer. So it comes in as a pending, authorized pending capture in authorized.net. And then you mark it as payment received and on authorized.net it becomes captured, pending settlement, and after 24 hours it becomes settled successfully. Now the store wants to cancel the order. So in this case, you are actually canceling a payment received order. When you cancel it, it actually issues a refund. And this one takes 24 hours to settle. So if I issue a refund today, then it will settle tomorrow. And then the, uh, after 24 hours, if you look at authorized.net, it will say refund settles. So this happens only after, a, if you're canceling an order after the customer was charged. Again, you don't have to worry about it. All you have to do is cancel the order and depending on what the status is, the IndieCommerce site will send the right information to authorized.net. Okay, now let's move to a sample site so we can go over what these different um, steps are. Okay, so uh, Phil, can you see my sample site? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is a sample site and here I'm logged in as a store admin. So let's go over, I placed some orders yesterday so we can go over it today. So I'm going to pick a few orders. I think the internet has been a little slow. Okay, now let's take order number 272. So I placed an order and this is, and let's say you want to check authorized.net to see everything is going fine. And this is something that we ask you to do when we switch you over to your own 
credit card processor and authorized data to make sure that your e-commerce site is talking with your authorized .NET account and the information is being passed. So you look at this and it's a pending order and this is the, it's called the transaction ID. You can search for a transaction on authorized.net based on the transaction ID, the last four digits of the customer's credit card, and sometimes even the customer's first name and last name. So these are the various search features you have. So let's start with the transaction ID. Now I'm going to go into my, this is a sample, um, this is a sandbox authorized.net account that we have for testing purposes. And again, when you create a new account, in case you do not go through all the settings, it just gives you a reminder that you still have a few things that you can uh, set on your uh, authorized.net account. So here, so I go to search for a transaction, and this is not a settled transaction, so I select unsettled, and then I put in my transaction ID, sorry. I need to put in my transaction ID there. Yes. So I search and it pulls up. So now because it's just an order that was placed, the status is authorized uh, pending capture. And this is my transaction ID. And if I click on this, I can see what's going on here. Um, normally, this is just, uh, we don't recommend that you do anything on the order from authorized.net because if you do change anything here, it is not going to reflect on your indie commerce site. Like for example, if you click on capture or void, that is breaking the cycle. So this is just for you to look at it, but don't take any actions here. So this is an order that is authorized pending. Now I go back to this order and as a store staff, I'm going to mark this as payment received. So now if I see here, it says capture, prior authorization, and the amount was captured. Now if I go to authorize.net, and then I search by the transaction ID again. It is not settled, so make sure you have the right settings when you search. And now it says it is captured, but it is pending settlement. So tonight it will actually um, settle. And I think there is a setting on your account to choose when you want all your transactions to settle. Um, different stores have chosen different settings. There are some, usually I think the default is around 9 p.m. Eastern time, uh, but you can, or maybe it's your local time, I'm not sure. You can check with authorize.net. And some stores have changed it to match the time when they close their register. So their online orders and their in-store orders are reported the same way. So you can change the time when it settles. So now it says captured settled. Now let's take a look at another order and see what happens when you cancel the order. So this is again a regular um, authorization. And let me cancel this order. And first, let's take a look at what this looks like. It is unsettled. I put my transaction ID. And then it says authorized pending capture. And I can go, let's say I canceled it. And since this is an authorization that was not captured, we actually have only a void. There is a void here. And you can go back and check. And you can see that this is voided. So uh, this is the best way initially. If you want to understand what's going on with the transactions, you can always take the transaction ID and then you can come here. But there are other ways to search, like I could search, let's say I wanna search all the unsettled transactions with my name on it. I can search by the last name, and then it pulls up all the transactions. So if you are looking at transactions for a particular customer, then you can do this. 
And one of the frequent questions we get from customers is, as soon as an authorization is placed on a customer's card, some customers are monitoring their credit card statements regularly online, and they will see that there is a hold, and they will think that there is a charge on their card. But it's not a charge, it's just an authorization. So if you get questions like that, then you can go into authorize.net and you can take uh, screenshots of this and show it as a proof to the customer saying that it is an authorization and not a capture. So it is, you have lots of things. And then uh, under reports, uh, again, um, I have never used this, but you can run reports of all transactions. And, in, and once you have the account running for a while, you can look at all the suspicious transactions because this is a test uh, account, a sandbox account. Uh, I don't think there are any suspicious transactions listed here, but that is uh, one thing that you can do. And I, let me just quickly go over what um, editing an order will look like, because that is one of the new features we have that I showed you in a um, screenshot, but let's uh, walk through this. So this is, I have a book and uh, it is store pickup. And let's say I call the store and then ask them to ship it to me instead of, um, I don't want to pick up, so I want to ship it. So I'm asking them, or maybe let's just change the quantity to two. Any kind of edits would work. Again, with any editing, even if you're not changing your shipping codes, you have to apply it because that's the only way the tax gets recalculated. And then I submit the change. So here, um, the original authorization was for 2731. Uh, now the new total is 5463. But this is slightly different from what I showed you before because here the card has not been charged at all. It is just an authorization. Now, since my profile is saved, as a customer's profile is saved, if I just go and mark it as payment received, what happens is the system is going to ignore the first authorization, create See, yeah, this is what happens. Again, all this happens automatically. The original authorization was for 2731, but now I added a book. So now the new total is higher, 5463. So the original authorization is not valid anymore because it doesn't have enough authorized amount. So the system is going to void. You see, this is a void transaction. The system is going to void this transaction, and then it is going to create a new transaction and capture it because it's payment received, capture it against this new transaction for this new amount. All you have to do is edit the order and mark it as payment received and the system will take care of it. But this is possible only because I have saved my credit card profile on this site. Again, if you, there are some stores who think that it is, uh, they, who do not want to save the credit card profile, they want to leave it up to the customers. And if the customer chooses not to save the profile, then uh, you're out of luck, you cannot do this, you have to call the customer, get their credit card numbers, and then you have to do it all over again. So this is possible only if the credit card profile is saved. And the first time I place an order, the authorization will actually have a line here that says the customer saved the profile. So that's an indication that the profile was saved. Or if you click on the reauthorize button here, you can, if, a customer saved the profile, you will be able to see these. If not, you will not be able to see these and you will just have a blank form where you have to fill in the customer's uh, credit card information. Um, so now this order is payment received. Now let's say after adding this one book, the customer decides they don't want that additional book anymore. Now we are going to remove this and I have not tried this before, but let's see, it should work. Um, I go to get shipping quotes, and then I apply to order, and then I submit the changes. Now, let's see what happened. So the order total is now back to 2731, but the amount that we charge the customer is 5463. So here, when you look at the balance, you can see that this is a negative 2732. When you see a negative balance here, that means you need to issue a refund to the customer. So this is where you would go to reauthorize CC. You go to the credit card terminal and you would use this section to issue the refund. Now, since I just issued, I just marked the order as payment received now, like five minutes ago, and the charge has not captured yet. 
and that's why it says it is pending settlement. So while it is pending settlement, I cannot issue a refund. We made sure that this does, because this just throws a random error and we don't want you to be confused. So we took this uh, thing. So as long as it says pending settlement, you cannot issue the refund. So tomorrow when I come back to the site, I will see that I will see this, I will be able to issue a refund against this authorization for this amount. And here we just have a note here too that you have to wait 24 hours to issue the refund. Okay. So now let's go back to the presentation. I have just a couple of more slides. So the last part is, uh, I know we are at two, but uh, this will only take a few more minutes. So the last part is the reconciliation report. And um, the reconciliation report was originally created to reconcile the transfer of funds between the ADA and the store. So that was the main purpose of the reconciliation report. And that is how it is designed. So if you are on ABS credit card processor, the orders that would appear on the reconciliation report are all the store fulfilled orders, credit card, so store fulfilled credit card orders, all the Ingram fulfilled orders, and any other payment method if the order is shipped in New York and the store is outside of New York. So those are the orders that would appear here. And if it is a store's credit card processor, you have the money. So the only orders that will show up here are store fulfilled credit card orders that are shipped into New York if your store is not in New York. All Ingram fulfilled orders, because if you are sending an order to Ingram from your Indie Commerce site, Ingram is going to invoice us. That does not change. Whether you're using ABS processor or your processor, that does not change. Ingram is still going to invoice us, which means we need to pull the money from you. So that's why you would see Ingram orders here. And other payment methods, any payment method, if the order is shipped into New York, you will see that in the reconciliation report. And our, um, the next thing is we are trying to improve, make the reconciliation report slightly better. Uh, this is like kind of the sample reconciliation report. I removed some of the columns that is not necessary for today's presentation. We are going to add a column here. So it says, so for every transaction, it will say whether it is using ABS processor or the stores processor. So this column is coming. And if you, this can be downloaded as a spreadsheet. So if you sort it by the transaction, the credit card processor, then you can see that these are all the ABAs. These are all the orders that were processed using ABA's credit card processor, and these are all the orders processed using store processor. And the big difference here is you can see that if it was done using ABA's processor, we are giving you the money. So it is all positives. And if it is using store processor, almost all cases, we are debiting money from your account, so it's always a negative. And this is, again, another column you should pay attention to, the credit card processing fee. As long as you are on ABS processor, you are going to be charged credit card fee. And once you move to your processor, you, don't, you won't be paying us credit card fee because that's between you and your credit card processor. And the tax paid by IndyCommerce, this is again any order that is shipped into New York. Those are the ones that get paid uh, New York tax. So whether you use ABS processor or your processor, you will still be paying us money for the New York tax, which we will be debiting from those accounts. So we are working on some upgrades to the reconciliation report. Again, this was designed for stores uh, when it is for reconciling funds between ABA and the store. So when stores move to your own authorized darknet, this reconciliation report is not going to help you with reconciling your credit card orders and authorized darknet statements. So we are going to monitor this for like until like we have about 20, 25 stores move to their own credit card processor and authorized startnet and see what kind of information those stores are requesting. And then we will look into creating reports that would be helpful for stores that use your own processor. Because we always get requests from stores where the bookkeeper is trying to reconcile and they are not able to find information on the Indie Commerce site. So we will get feedback from stores and we will see if we can create some reports that you can use or your bookkeeper can use. Okay, and there are uh, these are links to some helpful resources. The first two are our health documents, and if you want to go with Gravity, they have issued they have a page where you can submit, uh, create an account with Gravity, and these are the uh, boilerplates for terms and conditions, privacy policy, uh, return policy, shipping policy, etc. These are again boilerplates. You can generate these, customize it, 
to suit your store and then upload them as pages on your site. Okay, so now um, if there are any questions, we can take the questions now and um, or if we cannot get to those questions today, we will answer them uh, and then uh, send an email out to those who asked the questions. And this webinar was recorded and we will share it with everyone uh, sometime next week. Um, okay, let me see. I think there are a few questions here. Let's um, go over that. For the CVV, if someone leaves it blank, even if their card has one, uh, let me open it up for you. Um, for the CVV, if someone leaves it blank, even if your card has one, will the settings you just display allow the use of the card? No, it will not. If the card has a CVV and the customer does not put it in, it is not going to uh, let the customer go through. This is only, the, uh, we, from our experience, we have seen it only when it is a gift credit card. Again, um, please monitor it. Once you set it, monitor your authorized.net account. And I think authorized.net may be able to help you better with that question. Um, is the daily velocity filter based on the total sales to the website um, or sales from an individual card? The daily velocity filter is for the website. It's not an individual card, it's for the website. Okay, um, this is someone, um, uh, oh, okay, this is Dolores and I think we tried moving her site yesterday. So my site has configuration errors and I need to reset the credentials for the merchant service company. How can I get some live assistance on this? I'm not getting a response asking for it to be reset. Um, Dolores, we will get in uh, touch with you. If this is about resetting the credentials on your Indie Commerce site, uh, we will get in touch with you this afternoon. Does Gravity set up the authorized.net account for us or do we still have to do that whole process? Uh, Gravity will help you set up the authorized.net account, whether it is Gravity or Chosen or any credit card processor. They will help you set up the authorized.net account, but they may not help you totally with setting up your fraud filters. So that is something that you can use our documentation and our recommendations to go through the settings. But definitely, yes, they can help you set up the authorized.net account. And there is a question about Square. Uh, right now, yes, if you are using Square for in-store sales, um, we don't have a way to integrate into commerce with Square. Um, I, I, we may look into it next year, but uh, this year um, uh, it is um, beyond our scope to integrate with Square. If the order is marked as completed, can the order be refunded or edited? Um, right now, the setting is, um, again, with, when you're using ABS authorized.net, it's not possible. You probably know that, but when you move to your own authorized.net account, still when it's marked as completed, uh, you cannot edit or refund the order. I think that is the way it is. If we see a reason to allow stores to do it, we may revisit it later, but at this time, it is not possible. If an order is completed, can we edit? Okay, it's the same question. If What if a customer calls to cancel an order after it has been what if a customer calls to cancel an order after it has been completed? That is, when should a transaction be marked as completed? Okay, um, after an order has been completed, you cannot cancel the order or issue a refund from your website. In that case, I think right now, the only way to do that is log into your authorized.net account and then issue a refund from there. You can search by transaction ID and then issue a refund from there. 
and the other step is uh, the order will still be listed as completed on your website so you may have to contact us to move it to canceled again we can make these things happen later because it's your so it's your authorized.net account and it's your website we can give you more control over it but right now i think we are taking it one step at a time so if it is completed you don't have access to it but you can still issue the refund from authorized.net Uh, someone was asking if there is an additional webinar on the updates you have made to indie commerce i'm still trying to understand credit card switching yes kathy we are um i think um going forward we are planning to have an indie commerce webinar every other week it will be on wednesdays the same time between 1 and 2 30 and our plan is to cover all the new features that we have added to the indie commerce platform we are trying and if there are any uh, we will have a survey out to all members if you have any topics that you would like a webinar on, please let us know. Our goal is to have everyone better prepared for the holiday season. When is the deadline to have our new accounts in place? Uh, we don't have a hard deadline, but our strong, strong recommendation is to get it done by October 1st, mainly because going into the holiday season, you don't want to be uh, switching. Uh, very close to the holiday season. So we are thinking that we will have everyone move to their own accounts by October 1st. Um, Can those, again, and a question from Derek, can those orders marked as completed still be refunded and or recharged if another book is added as an example? Okay, uh, again, if it is marked as completed at this time, uh, you do not have access to edit the order. Um, you can definitely do a refund from authorized.net. You can definitely do a refund. You can search by the transaction ID and issue a refund from the authorized.net. But adding an uh, transaction to that it is not possible right now from your website um, for completed orders of course if it is the same customer and if the profile has been saved you can create another order on behalf of the customer as long as a credit card profile is saved you can create another order and charge them for that additional book Will there be a way to find out how much we owe ABA at any point? Um, Clark, if this is about uh, the online, oh, if this is after your transition to your own credit card processor, how much you owe us. Um, when you mark the orders as completed, it will appear in the next reconciliation report. Um, this is about, please post the last page with the website links. Yes, we will. Uh, we will make the recording available and we will also make the PowerPoint slides available. How soon before we make the switch are we supposed to let you know? Um, it depends on how many open orders you have on the website. Again, anytime you are ready, we are ready. As I said, it takes only 15 minutes for us to switch over. So anytime you are ready, we are ready. And if you have, if you normally send orders to Ingram from your website, then you need to plan ahead of time and make sure that you don't send orders to Ingram at least a week before you plan to move. But otherwise, if it is only orders processed by the store, then it's up to you. How fast can you process orders? Let's say you have orders coming in and you are capable of processing them in the next 10, 15 minutes, then it doesn't matter. You can just tell us. Again, as long as you have provided us with the authorized.net information that we need to configure your site, uh, we don't need a lot of time to know that you're switching. 
Uh, one other thing is we try not to do it on Fridays. One, because through the summer, the ABA staff, we have summer Fridays, which means we are usually gone by 1 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. And the other reason is if something goes wrong over the weekend with credit card orders on your site, we may not be available. And if you have to contact authorize.net or your credit card processor, so it becomes complicated. So we try as much as possible not to do the switchover on Fridays. But between Monday to Thursday, I think any time is good. Okay, this is from Derek. Uh, I think many stores not completed much earlier. This would be reason to allow editing. Yes, Derek, that is a good point. Um, I think as long as the stores are using their own credit card processor, I don't see a reason why we shouldn't allow it, but we will definitely take that into consideration. Thank you. Um, is Gravity the only integrated option? No, I think um, what is important is Gravity is a credit card processor, a merchant service provider. There are many others out there and you can choose any one of those, it doesn't matter, as long as they can work with Authorize.net. Authorize.net is what is important for us because IndieCommerce integrates only with Authorize.net payment gateway. But on the other side of Authorize.net, the credit card processor, there are plenty of options for you to choose. And you should be shop. You can shop around and find the ones that give you the best rates. The key is they have to work with Authorize.net. That's it. Okay. I think we have covered. Um, uh, okay, um, about Indie Light. Again, at this time, our focus is on getting all the Indie Commerce sites switched over to your own authorized.net. We have not started to work on Indie Light sites. And um, at this time, I think we don't have an ETA. Uh, Phil, is there something you want to add about that? Um, not right now. No, we're okay. going to wait and see how the transition goes in trying to hit the October deadline before we, we push that. That um, We're mostly concerned about the amount of, of uh, sales going through the system. We've been tagged before, and we know some merchants have been tagged before by the credit card merchant providers. So we're, we're just trying to ease up that, that load by having everybody have their own account rather than have it go through one massive amount, especially as we're getting into the shopping season. So we're hoping if we can free up stuff by October, we'll be very good going forward and it'll give us some, some leeway to work with uh, Indie Light. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, and this question is mainly, we are switching from an Indie Light site to Indie Commerce site. Should we wait to complete the switch before setting up our own authorized StatNet account? Um, uh, Mary Kay, you can work with this, you can work together on this. So I, you can set up your own merchant account and get your authorized.net account and get them ready. So when you are ready to move to Indie Commerce, so you don't have to waste time setting up your merchant account or your authorized.net account. So if you think that it's going to happen, if you're going to move to Indie Commerce in the next month or so, I would say just go ahead and then get your authorized.net account and the merchant account set up. Oh, uh, sorry, Jonah. Um, I should remind myself to repeat the questions. Okay, so Derek's question was, uh, most of our stores have the habit of completing orders ahead of time. They complete orders very quickly. Um, the order comes in, and I think what Derek was meaning is order comes in, and then in the next day or two, they just mark it as completed. And then later, they figure out that they have to refund the customer. So giving stores the option to edit completed orders would be good. Um, yeah, so that is something that we will look into. Um, this is how often will money we owe ABA be taken from our account? Um, again, uh, the, um, whether we pay the store's money or take money from the store, it depends on how often we run the money management and the reconciliation report. Normally, we do it twice a month. 
So it is done on the 15th and the 25th of a month. But starting April, since we saw a big increase in online orders and stores needed the money sooner, we started doing it every week. So now if you were to move to your own Authorize.net account, we will be pulling money from your account every week. Um, I think um, we may go back to twice a month. As we have more stores switch to their own Authorize.net account and they are not dependent on us for the money for the credit card orders that went through, then I think we plan to move back to twice a month, which would be the 15th and the 25th of the month. Um, okay, I think um, I think we took care of um, most of the questions. Um, again, there's a question about will you please share the questions and answers from the chat box as well. Um, we um, um, go to webinar has made some upgrades and I believe all the questions are still available and uh, whatever is available with go to webinar we will share it uh, or also uh, there is a FAQ I think that might be better there is an FAQ if you go to the Indie Commerce Health Center on bookweb.org we created a FAQ page for all questions related to the credit card processing and we will post all these questions and answers as part of the FAQ <coughs> Um, okay, there is one more. Um, this is uh, Catherine Weller. Uh, I wasn't sure whether Nexus would still apply when processing no longer happened in New York. Um, Catherine, that uh, I I don't believe I can answer that question fully. So I think Catherine is uh, asking why we are taking New York sales tax for orders that are shipped into New York. It was it was put in place because of ABA's nexus in New York. And since ABA is big on sales tax and being right, <clears throat> I think we have continued to charge New York sales tax for any order that is, <clears throat> sorry, shipped into New York because of ABA's nexus here. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but uh, that is the reason behind it. Um, I think that is it, let me quickly, okay. I think that is it and um, Uh, Phil, are there any questions in the chat window? I don't see any. I had answered a bunch of questions earlier that were. Um, okay. You you probably see those as well, but. Yeah. Okay. That was great, um, Keitha. Thank you very much. Yes, yeah. and uh, thank you everyone for um, taking the time to attend this webinar. I know there are. You may still have lots of questions. Please don't hesitate to write to us. And this was recorded. So we will share the recording and the PowerPoint slides um, sometime next week. And on behalf of the entire Indie Commerce team, uh, this is not possible without the whole team. So on behalf of the entire Indie Commerce team, thank you and have a good rest of the day. Bye. Thanks everyone.